everyone and welcome to my channel and to this video. Today we will be painting another very cute little bookmarks. And for painting those I will be using this Fontaine watercolor paper. It is 300 GSM or 140 pounds, cold press, 100% cotton, 20 by 40 centimeters or 8 by 15 and a half inches, which I will divide into the half with this masking tape and just use today the half of the paper. For the watercolors, I will be using my watercolors, which I made myself. I also have a video on how I make my watercolors, so I will link it down in the description box if some of you maybe want to check that out. I will be using ultramarine and a turquoise color and just a little bit of the black. That's the first mix I've made. And then the second one is green and a little bit of the yellow. That's something like a rose sienna because I do want to get that green color that is a little bit more natural, a little bit more going on the yellow side. Alas, the third mix is pretty pink from Etcher palette and violet from again my colors. I will also be using some black, some yellow and some dark brown later on straight from the palette. For the brushes I will be using around this number six two mop brushes, one a little bit smaller and one large one to prevent my paper. And I do like this one because it can hold a lot of water and it does put a light coat on my paper. So first picking up that blue mix and then that green mix and just tapping in onto my paper here and there where I, wherever I feel like adding that color. You don't have to be bothered with precision here. You can just add tap in the color wherever you like. It will bleed because your paper is wet. Then tapping in some of the color, then sprinkling with some clean water. So you can do just splatters. You can do splatters with any color you like. You can do splatters with the clean water. You can maybe add a little bit of the salt also just to add some more texture to the background. And that's the point, just to add textures to the background. Afterwards, I left the first layer to dry completely and it, when it was dry, I picked up just a little bit of the clean water, splattered some clean water on top and then again splattered some green, splattered some yellow. Again, you can do any splatters you like here also. While that was drying, I did drew my heart and for the heart, because I do want it to have one and the other side the same, I just folded my paper and drew one side of the heart and then cut it with the scissors and that is how I get my heart to be symmetrical or the same on the both sides. For the third one I did want it to be a little bit thinner so I did draw it a little bit thinner. And when finished with that, while I was doing it, my paper dried. So I'm just thinking where to place all those hearts. Just think of it as there will be bookmarks and you will be cutting those. So you want most of them to go on two bookmarks, not just to be on one bookmark. I do want every heart to be just cut and not visible the entire way. So that was that's something with, uh, what I was thinking when I was placing my hearts and doing the composition. Then I just trace it onto my watercolor paper, added a couple of dots for the string that is going to go in through the hearts. And that is how I place them. That is my composition. That is how it looks. You can of course do a little bit more of the hearts. You don't have to do three hearts. You can do five, six, ten, whatever you want and how much ever you want. You can do one large heart. That's just up to you. And also, as I said, colors are definitely something that is up to you. I started with privetting the heart. This is the one in the middle and just on the edges of the heart added a little bit of the blue and then on top a little bit of that pink color added also a little bit of the yellow. Well, I must say I wasn't I was at least happy with that first heart because it just didn't want to pick up the colors that I wanted to. At the end, I do love how it turned out, but somehow I was just slightly struggling with the colors on that heart. So I will be adding a little bit more of the pink pigment, a little bit more of the yellow pigment. And that heart was standing out because that color I was using for the heart wasn't in the background. So I was just struggling to find the amount right amount of the pigment for that heart. For the second one I've painted with my mix of blues 
and just I did not paint it entirely first I did privet and then just stopping with the tip of my brush here and there a little bit of the blue then added some black edges and a couple of splatters with black you can see right now going back to the first heart adding a little bit of that pink again now I decided to add some white gouache because it was too colored for me I did wanted to have some lighter spots so I decided to add a little bit of the white gouache for the third one I started the same way privetted the heart and then when finished with that I just added a little bit of that um, green color green mixed with yellow and here right there again I did not paint the entire heart I did wanted some parts of the heart to stay lighter and to see that background to, to make that background a little bit more visible also added some black on the edges of my heart because I did want it to I did want it edges to be a little bit darker so in some parts I did add a little bit thicker line on some parts a little bit thinner line so just not try try not to make the entire line around the heart completely the same so again going back to that first one adding a little bit more of the pigment as I said quite struggling with that one and well it does happen you know you can you can struggle with your colors and that's also fine you know just it is important that you're happy with your end outcome now a little bit more of the splatters with white gouache while the paper was still wet and when it dried it all slightly blended and those splatters weren't so visible and weren't just the real splatters but just blend in some colors and added a little bit more of the texture now again adding some of the pigment on the sides on the edges of my hearts and I've picked up some dark brown for the from the etcher palette and just adding the color on the edges and then rinsing my brush and smudging it slightly inwards I did not pre-wet the entire heart this time but as you can see right now just adding the pigment and then smudging it with a clean brush the brush that I rinsed in my water and that is how I've added that darker edges I didn't want those hearts to be slightly grungy so why not so that's the reason I was adding that darker color on the edges later on I will also be adding a little bit more of the details after that dried I decided to do the string and first I did draw the strings from going from the upper part of the hearts upwards but then at the end I also decided I do want to do a lower strings looking like it's just going through the heart and going also downwards I thought that could look a little bit more interesting a little bit more nicer so at the end I also drew some circles in the lower part of the heart and added some strings there and you can also see that I wasn't trying to paint one nice similar line but my line is somewhere thicker somewhere thinner and also broken in some parts now I'm adding some wiggly line wavy line on top of it I thought it might be a little bit more interesting and why would that line be boring in just one straight line it could be a little bit more interesting and now as I was saying those grungy hearts I'm now adding a little bit more of the texture a little bit more of the maybe some cracks in our hearts why not so using this time a little bit of the black and also a little bit of the dark brown some white gouache to emphasize those broken parts of the heart and when it all dries it will be a little bit lighter that white gouache won't be so visible at the end You can of course skip this part if you don't want your hearts to be grungy you don't have to do the those broken parts now a couple of splatters with pink and also I decided to add some of the shadows beneath the heart so I picked up a little bit of that black to add some shadows just on the right side of our hearts and that's basically it I'm done when I removed the tape actually I was thinking I did wanted to have a little bit more of the splatters with white gouache so this time on completely dry paper I've added some splatters with white gouache and with that I'll be finishing off of course there is just one more thing to do to cut them into bookmarks and you know some of you were asking me how I remove my paper from the from that block so here here it goes you can see it right now I'm just using a palette knife and just with that palette knife removing it goes very very smoothly so you can definitely use some maybe thin knife also sharper on the edge cut them into bookmarks into three parts 
And with that, definitely now I'm done. Thank you guys a lot for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you do like it, please hit the like button, share it in comment. If you haven't still, please do subscribe to my channel. That really mean a lot to me. Maybe consider joining my channel. That's that join next to the subscribe. And also there is again one new feature on my channel. That thanks button. If you do like this video and want to say thanks and maybe give some tip, you can definitely do that. Click on that thanks button and find out a little bit more of the details. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.